second-hand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has appeared And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean I need. What is up? This guy again. You're supposed to go around. Screw you. Stop that car apart. Screw you. Fast. We'll call the landlord. Hey, welcome to Real Men. I'm Tim Steeves. This is the show where men get real. We've got a great panel. Let's get right to it. Joining us today, Ted Dykstra How are you? is How on the you? couch. Joining him as well, Tim Reichert is here. Nice to see you, Tim. And the effervescent Dwayne Hill will be joining us. You're effervescent nice again. To see you. Yeah, lovely. effervescent, sure. And Lori Elliott, also here today. And uh, that brings me to one of the next topic. Let's get it started with Lori Elliott with the commentary. Oh, Lore. You know, there's nothing quite like watching two drunken men in a bar fight, huh? Especially when one of them's my boyfriend. And the only reason why he's fighting the other guy is because the other guy laughed at my pants. Well, when we went out that night, my boyfriend laughed at my pants, too. But I decided not to kill him, because I'm a woman. Why do you guys have to fight all the time? Why? I just don't understand. How come every situation you are in in life, there is a possibility of somebody getting a bitch slap at the end of it? You're in the bathroom. Are you looking at my penis? You're in a restaurant. Are you looking at my food? You're in the office. Are you looking at my pen? Why? And in your, when you're in your cars, the road rage. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. In fact, the only reason why my boyfriend actually chews gum in a car, and I'm not joking, is so he can throw it in a jaywalker's hair. That's right. <laughs> and his favorite fight story in the world is when he was in the Bahamas and he punched a shark. Yeah. He brags about getting in a fight with a fish. That's my man, eh? I do have one solution, though. I don't know if you guys are going to go for it, though, but it's this. Mandatory estrogen shots for all the boys, eh? Then we can all just get along, and I can borrow your bras. It'll be great, eh? But seriously, though, if you're a guy, and you've just come out of a fight on top, and you find a woman at that bar staring at your crotch, it's not because she wants to sleep with your bad self. It's because she's wondering just how small your penis is. Tim? <laughs> not, not small. Come on. <laughs> but throw gum in the pedestrian's hair, Lore? <laughs> like, where did you find this winner? Holy crap. <laughs> what about it, Ted? Do you ever have to throw the hands? Who's slapping you for looking at their penis while they're peeing? <laughs> I'm, I'm still stuck There's way. a lot of unanswered questions, <laughs> Lore. I'm stuck you. way back. How many times have you heard the guys go, the guy was staring at my penis, man. I had to take care of oh, it. Oh, I thought never. you were We've looking at it. We've never heard that. Never. 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 We've all heard Loney. something. Please. We've all heard something as ridiculous, though, okay? I mean, right? Yes, yes. What she's saying is, we've heard something that ridiculous you, as an excuse to go for a fight. Because exactly. if, if, if a guy has a penis that's stare worthy, he'd brag about it. He'd be that's like, right. that guy stared at my penis again. God help him. I can't blame him. I call it homophobia. A lot of guys get beaten to death because guys stare at their penises. Well, why are they staring at their penises? Because maybe they're not staring at their penises. I think they are, and I think they deserve it. No. Is that I, a double pleat? Okay, <laughs> let's, let's hey, reset a this a little guy. bit. Dwayne, when was the last time you really had to throw down? Now, you've been in, I know you're an, an ex-bouncer. So I was a bouncer for a long time. Tell us a couple time. of stories. Give us a couple of tales. Well, you know, I'll tell you. One time, we had this, we had this guy who was crazy. He's like, I'm a Lakeshore boy. I'm going to knock everyone out. I'm trouble. I'm dangerous. We had this ex-bouncer <laughs> here. This is a classic do not fight story. There's this ex-bouncer there, and he was, like, bigger than me. I'm 6'5", he was 6'6". Six, six. Huge, huge uh, mullet and giant mustache, and he came walking out. He had cowboy boots on. He was 6'10", and the whole crowd was like, get him, get him. They want to see him beat the living hell out of this little tiny guy. And he walked up to me, and the guy literally jumped a foot off the ground and whack, broke his nose. He went straight back, cracked his head of concrete. He was twitching and spasming, and the guy was laughing at him and jumping around. We're all like, let's go back in the bar. 
<laughs> I love it. Let's go. My, my pepper spray's in my purse. Actually, it's more of a, it's more of a carry all. I love uh, it. And so, the, you know, I don't, I don't get into fights. I've been involved in over 100 fights. I say fights are foolish. I've never seen the one moral, for a good reason. The moral being the size does not matter. Size not important in the scrap, no. right? Not I, no, at I, all. I don't think so. I, unless it's the size of the brain. I but mean, what, really. a, what about this thing I hear about all the time? But I've never seen it, the short man syndrome, where they, you know, like Scrappy Doo was a small dog, and he always had to get in a fight. Like what? <laughs> scrappy Doo. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, think, I think I think there is tiny guys who have chips on their shoulders. I mean, I was a bouncer sure. for a long time. Sure. I had lots of. Ted, you're a tiny man. Is, and <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I, I've had little guys walk up to me and they say, "You're not so tough." And I say, and I grab Ted and I throw them at him. <laughs> I think get all tangled up in his and I'm little limbs. I'm starting to resent that. <laughs> they get all yeah. tangled up in his little limbs. a lot of trouble. He throws me at anyone. No, you, no, 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 no. You, they get you, tangled up you are in his tiny. little limbs? <laughs> I'm not tiny. I'm a very... All right. Fight, 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 I'm afraid, fight, you're, fight, tiny. Fight, I'm afraid fight. you're a tiny We're man. Right. Break it up. All right, hold Order. it down. Thanks, Dwayne. That was, no, that's all Dwayne had to do you when he was see, a bouncer. That's all I had to do was just blow on him gently and say, that man, if you break a bone, it Ted, could go right through your hand. Teddy, have you ever had to really... Throw it down. Never. Had I, maybe to throw if I call it you down. Teddy no. one more time, no, we'll have to go. I, I, I sort of get out of it with my mouth. I, I basically, I can be smart enough to make someone, f sort of go, oh, you, why I oughta. I've, so I, and I used to have a dog when I was a kid. I had a German Shepherd, so no one would beat me up. Mm -hmm. so, so you, Tim, do you have a go yeah. point, Timmy? Grade seven was the last time I got pushed to my go point. <laughs> <laughs> And boy, was I pushed. I had to, grade seven, I had to go. But I, 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 someone loose. killed your mother. But Is I've spent the rest of my life uh, figuring out how to talk my way out exactly. of and yeah. get out of. And, uh, you know. I think like that's why we're all you, in this you, business. You can't, you're in a bar, and you bump into a guy. You, you, it's crowded, so you bump elbows like this much. Bump. And a guy spills a bit of beer on his favorite shirt, some big meathead. Right? And suddenly he's like, I'm going to kick your ass right now, because I can. I'm huge, you know. And I, well... Yeah. What I mean, about what about when the when, like the territorialism? Because I was talking to my uh, friend and he's from England and he was saying just talking about soccer fights and stuff like that and he was saying you wouldn't believe the territorialism just because this is this is where they live this is their team they've got to fight for it and stuff. <laughs> People die at soccer games. Well, let's I don't face understand. it. Like, is the world like any any worse off with that DNA out of the pool? I mean, really? I mean, they're obviously morons. They've got you know as soon as a moron. You're speaking becomes, of all the British people now, are you? Of course yeah. I am. Yes. Well, here's here's hey, how hold on. No, my, 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 my family's British. British. What I'm saying is, oh, yeah, exactly. I'm referring to soccer fans in general. Yeah. Soccer's a violent sport. Here's how easy. It's easy <laughs> to talk your way out of it, though. Oh, because often the moron, like I've been in a bar and had a guy, like Ten he seconds, just wants Tim. to fight, and he's so stupid. All he can do is come up to you, and the best way to get you into a fight he can think of is, you're a fag. Leave. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> That's all we got. We're, we're gonna come right back in the next segment. We'll be talking about aging bachelors. How old is too old? Mm. We'll find out. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. This segment, we're talking about the aging bachelor. How old is too old? Dwayne? Oof, middle-aged bachelors. You know, are they lazy? Are they commitment phobic? Are they afraid to grow up? Yeah, probably. You know, I'm 35 years old. I'm not married. You know, uh, I've got married friends. You know, they tell me that they're really happy and they love watching their kids grow up and their wife was beautiful when she was pregnant. And I think about that and I think, I didn't ask. But they like to share it with you anyway because they don't really have a lot of male friends left. Now, me on the other hand, I, you know, they say to me, Dwayne, are you happy? And I think, well, you know, not always. You know, sometimes I get sad. I get lonely. But I think I'd rather be sad and lonely and single than sad and lonely and married. No offense. I mean, it's great when you're fumbling around for your penis and trying to wake your wife when you're trying to masturbate in bed. No offense, again, but... It's just not my style. I get kind of hot under the collar just thinking about it. I mean, who's really happy all the time anyway? Lesbians, maybe. In movies. <laughs> and guys who get to kill zombies. I mean, that'd be great. But that's also, unfortunately, only in movies. So, for all the married couples out there who care about me and are worried that I'm going to die alone, don't. When I get too fat to meet anybody and too bitter to talk to anybody, I can always order a mail order bride. Half my age and dying to taste freedom. Thank God for the Philippines. Tim? <laughs> Are you getting the idea now that we don't put any words in anyone's mouth on the show? <laughs> pretty much unscripted here at Real Men. Nice job, Dwayne. Well, Dwayne, joining you on panel, a couple of married dudes. So let's hear from Ted on the subject. 
Um, well, I don't know what it's like to be a middle-aged bachelor, so... Um, you will. I, <laughs> I call, <laughs> but I never, forever. I never masturbate century, beside my wife. I don't, no, I don't, I don't, oh, I don't say I never had. I, I went through a period and I don't anymore. <laughs> That's way too, why did you bring that up? That's way too open. I'm sorry, man. No, I, I call them middle-aged bastards. <laughs> because we all, like, I went through, my, my whole life, I, I always was in a relationship. And I always, at the end of each one, three years or whatever, at the end of each one, I would tell myself when, when I got out, okay, stay single for a while. Don't you know how much fun bachelors have? Stay single. And like a week later, I fall in love and I'm back in one, right? So I'm just... Oh, I'm getting a to toothache this, over here. I know, yeah. I know, I know. It's great. It's, I mean, it, it is great. It's great to fall in love and it's great to feel that. And of course, I mean, the whole thing is, is that Honestly, as humans, you know, we are constantly evolving. You know, there's, this is a different time. You know, I think, I think it, we change every seven years. I mean, really, you know what I mean? We, we grow. And if you grow together, you find that right person, that's fantastic. But if you don't, there's always threesomes. And it's like 600 bucks. <laughs> okay. you can pick Come on, you, you, you joke machine. Now, don't you think, Wait, okay. kidding. Don't you, don't you think there's somebody... And a threesome isn't just two other women. A threesome is also like, a threesome is you, a video game, you know, porn, <laughs> Jack Daniels, and a joint. I mean, that's like, woo! If you got a wife, she's like, you are so irresponsible. Yeah, well, you won't get implants. I can't hear you. You're just white noise. But so many relationships, so many marriages these days with middle-aged men in them are threesomes, but the woman just, the wife just doesn't know about it. Exactly. Right? It's like Francois Mitterrand, you know, his, his, his mistress oh, shows up at his funeral. Or, I can't tell you how many bars I've worked at before and seen, like, you know, these guys come in with their, their, their middle-aged men. They're bringing in their clients uh, for a lunch and stuff. And all of a sudden, boop de bimbo comes in to join them and then they leave off to a hotel and brag about what a great time they had the yeah, next day was... and meanwhile I'm like what's on your finger you're a dink yeah. How did we get to? How did we get from bachelors to married men who fool around on their? Yeah, wives? really. Uh, right. uh, no, issues, issues. I issues. Had, I had to bring. Let's, it. Talk about married let's men. stick to Dwayne's problem. Let's Dwayne's reset. Okay. Dwayne, Hold on, poor Ted. Dwayne. Ted, that okay. make, that's a good point. Let's let's reset now. Dwayne must have some sort of a point because men are getting married later. The average age now is 27, which is up there. It's which getting is up amazing. There. Like, yeah. 27 tells me one thing. There's a lot of hicks left. I mean, really. I mean, why would you do it before you're 30? I mean, you guys... I was 30 when I got married. Exactly. You yeah. were 30. 30, I find that... I, I, you know, I was saying this to Tim earlier. I find that men don't necessarily marry when they meet the right person. It's, it's the right time. It's when you both hit 30 and you think, where do we go from here? Where do we progress from here? You know... But it still has to be the right person. It does. It does. And even if you don't necessarily believe it, she certainly does. Let's go, sweetheart. The wedding, I booked this whole thing. It's got a... <laughs> What does a midlife crisis have to do with, uh, like, just, I, I'm just wondering, like, with guys. My whole life is a midlife crisis. It really <laughs> is. Like, I was thinking the other day, like, I bought, like, $60 in cashews, and I was really messed up, and I thought, <laughs> I got a midlife crisis. Like, some people have got, like, three kids, you know, two of them are on respirators. Daddy, do you love me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, Daddy loves you. Oh, I want some crack. You know, and Dwayne's just having a great time, you know, picking his nose and flicking it at walls. What the You're hell are you talking about? Wow. I'm just saying, like, you have, there's freedoms associated That's with what was $60 in cashews. I know. You You're allowed to buy $60, $60 in cashews. cashews. Well, I, I, you have $60? I do this show. I'm <laughs> a wealthy man. I thought you spent all this money on this great sort of stained paint job of your wall, and it's your snot? Yeah, I know. I, well, I just tell girls, it's, I say it's, it's a Bos relief, and it's got, it's got texture to it. It and looks good. You know snot it, on the wall, single man. <laughs> Let's see if we can do the rest of the segment without saying snot. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Can we Sounds say ball good. deep? <laughs> Balls deep. Okay. All right. Okay, Bill. It's a jealousy thing for me always. It's just it's just not a jealousy. It's I cuz I've always got I've got something way better than this as far as I'm concerned what they've got. Yeah. Right. Way better. However, it's still that just oh you bastard, yeah. you know. It would be uh, nice to know that you could come home absolutely trashed and not have to sort of answer for it in yeah. the morning. Like that, the, us Mary guys, we think about that, I think, from time to time. Because you can't stumble. You, you, it's, it's like Dwayne, the next there, morning do you, you think you will get married, and, Dwayne? You know. Um, you know what, I think I will. I think I'll marry, uh, I think I'll get married at some point. I don't necessarily think English will be her mother tongue. And she may just want, you know, a green card. <laughs> she might. Well, I don't know. I think, episode, I'll marry, I think I'll marry somebody much younger than me, unfortunately. And I, you know, I mean, but still, for me as a bachelor, there's nothing going to replace the sound of two heads bonking together as they fight for penis. Okay, let's see if we just can't get out on that. I can't believe this place. I can't control them. When we come back, we're going to be talking uh, prostitution. Should it be legalized, decriminalized? Enza Supermodel is going to join us and talk about that. You're watching Real Man, home of the kahunas, baby. Yeah. 
Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We've been joined this segment with a very special guest. Enza Supermodel is here. Thanks, Enza, for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. You know, a super it's show nice. deserves a supermodel. Sweet. So. Okay, well, oh, yes. that's Thank great. You. We've got Enza here this segment. Dude looks like a lady, I think. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's get it I kicked off with Ted that. Dicer. We're talking about prostitution. Should it be legalized? Teddy, what do you think? Well, uh, my ancestors, my ancestors, my parents come <laughs> They're my ancestors. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Uh, come from a very enlightened uh, country named Holland, and prostitution is legal there. So I certainly uh, have no problem with it, and I think it should be absolutely legalized across the board here. And right uh, on. Enza, during the break, yes, you were. I love, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> during the break, you were telling us that you used to run an escort service. Yes. Why don't you tell us a little bit? Dwayne wants to know how it much. Was, I think. Uh, it was one summer. I was really broke, and I thought, you know what? I'll try this. So I, it was called Enza's Escort, right? It was upscale um, escort service. And I advertised blonde brunettes and redheads, right? But guess who was all of them? You know, it's just me, right? That so was just, yeah. <laughs> now, how much did you I charge? Well, because it was upscale and I was so good, I charged 500. But I had to Whoa, reduce my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I had to reduce my fees because. You get a lot less than that for this show. It I'll wasn't tell you competitive that. enough, you know? So, but. Um, Enza, what makes it. High end, yeah. Well, because yeah. you know, <laughs> her end is high. Yeah, what's 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 upscale? <laughs> what's upscale? Yes. What's yes. the up Enzo. package? Enzo, what's upscale? Upscale is because one, I dress like a very elegant lady. You know, very up, very this, classy. I can't, you know, argue with that. Right. Very. Even. A Very business-like, and none of this trash, right? You know. That's right. And, uh, Unless they want it, and then you have to pay extra. And it wasn't like I charged, okay, this is it, an hour, and that's it. It was very refined. What about sex? How much well, for sex? Was there any? Well, you Come know on, what? Enzo. This go, is a show. I'm going to do a triple share. double. Because if the government <laughs> finds out, they're no, gonna, like, no, this, this show is still, immune. Still <laughs> taxable this, income. This Let's cut to it, Enzo. How I much paid, for a triple double? I paid my taxes. You know, <laughs> I don't even know what a triple double is. But okay, one at, time, one at a time. One at a time. Did they know that you were? Oh yeah, I advertised it. You know, perfectly. And there was one guy. And I'll tell you why we should decriminalize it. There was one guy who called me from Kingston Penitentiary. He was just, he was getting out, right? And he goes, oh, man, I want to come and see you now. I want to, uh, you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I think. As soon as that. That's creepy. That's wanna, creepy. You know, that, that F word. And uh, he, um, as soon as I got off the phone, I just hung up and I said, that's it. I'm dead. You know, and I got out of the escort service. So decriminalizing it would. you haven't made money since. None. <laughs> he still sends me a Christmas card every year, which is nice. You know, it's nice to as hear soon as I got that phone call, I said, my God, what these girls have to go through. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, transsexual or straight. And decriminalizing it would protect uh, these people in the profession. That's right. right? So it's a great Absolutely. thing yeah. to it's do. It's like any you know? of the vices. Yeah. All the vices. It, it's all they create crime by making them illegal. By making yeah. things that people that the public on mass wants. Well, well way, we're going to yeah. Way more than half totally. the hookers work and have been a victim of violent crime. Yeah. At some yeah. Point. yeah. And they more can't report it. Yeah. Mm. You know because the police. Well, what were you doing, right? Oh, I was working the street, and they'll get charged with prostitution, right? So. Right away, they should decriminalize it. You know, look at the tax money that can come out. I'm of dying. This, I'm know? just dying to hear what yeah. Dwayne Hill's got brewing over there. Tell all that you think is, you know, it should be government regulated because at that age, you don't want them being alone on the street. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I definitely think it should, I mean it is decriminalizing Canada. It's a, it's I mean it's because of our Puritan background. The whole it's getting bigger. Shoot it, you know, because yeah. guns are legal. You know, yeah. you're allowed to show somebody being killed. But you're not allowed to show sex. We really started off backwards. We're trying to you know backtrack and make it all work again. That's but true. let's face it, sex is there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it unless it's really dirty and then it's great. Well, <laughs> That's true. Well, like what, going back to what Ted said, in Holland, you can see naked breasts on television at five o'clock in the afternoon, but they won't show Terminator until after midnight. Exactly. exactly. That's a wonderful country. thing Star about Europe. Country. The it is. Yeah. Star Wars was restricted in, in Switzerland or something. It was like a restricted movie because of a lightsaber fight. Let's face right. it, the lightsaber <laughs> fight was real lightsabers. Well, sex yeah. doesn't kill. Guns do, right? Yeah. Oh, I like Lori, that. Lori, Lori, are you a fan of uh, legalized kill? prostitution? Totally, totally. Yeah. I, I, and it bugs me though. because it, it just irritates me so much that that you that a person can't doesn't have complete and utter control over what they do with their body. Yeah. You should be able, if you want to charge somebody to have sex with you, you should totally be able to yeah. do that, and there's in a health, safe environment. Too, right? The, yeah. the, the girls and, in, yeah. in Amsterdam and there's a ton of, and as, as yeah. far as the exploitation goes, there's a ton of exploitative industries, including the one we're in right now. Absolutely. It's like, you know, I'd love to give you the job if your breasts were bigger. You know, right. this is one of those yeah. industries, yeah. and mm -hmm. we can And Dwayne, you did get the job. Yeah. I, got the I job. did get the 
Good job. A big back small cup, but God knows I focus on your balls. And I appreciate it. Oh, you know, he's really pretty. Did. Oh, stop. Hey, guys, I'm telling you. I'm leaving you know. in your chopper. It's on the roof. <laughs> Gas it up, Andre. All right, that's, that's all the time we have for that segment. When we come back, we're going to have a couple minutes left. Don't go away. We'll wrap it up. We'll have a little more with Enzo Supermodel when we come back. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We've got a couple of minutes left. We've been talking about prostitution. Should it be legalized or not? Now, Lori Ellie, you're pro-prostitute, aren't you? I'm not a pro-prostitute, <laughs> but I am pro-prostitute. Oh, 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 I'm wacky, Lori. <laughs> you got to keep an eye on me, Lori. You're the fastest. That, that, that is funny. Yeah, it's not so bad, uh, right? So you just anyway. dream of being a prostitute? <laughs> no, no, no. Someday. Oh, the silliness. No, I'm totally, I think prostitution should be legalized just so that women have a fair fight and a leg to stand on when they do have to take some jerk to court. Every one of us sitting on these couches is a prostitute. You know, we get paid for exploiting what it is we choose to exploit. And why we choose to make sex some kind of taboo thing is the beginning of the end. Puritanism and religion and all that stuff should stay out of the bedroom. And if you want to pay to have sex, they should have it. Nicely Soon. said, Teddy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If I want to get into a bar fight and be single and middle-aged, and take all my rage out on a teenage prostitute who's legal. <laughs> Is that 18 or 19? Uh, depends on what you prefer. As long as she says she's a different age, I don't care. But I think that, uh, I think that we've covered all the basically male vices today. It seems like we've covered all these, because it's a male it's thing. It's been an enlightening show, hasn't it, Dwayne? Really? I think they need to keep it, keep it illegal, fight it hard, crush it because I'm married and I can't take advantage and I don't want anyone else to have any fun. If you can't oh. have fun. <laughs> You're saying prostitution fun. is the Taliban yeah, of you know what? society. It's not, yeah, no, it's not even fun. I think, I think that they should just, I think it's awful that, that the women have to lead, lead a life of crime when all they are just trying to do is just make money. Enzo, and the last thought. You know what? We gotta give the women the freedom to do the profession the best way they can with a lot of protection and a lot of, uh, Benefits. You said it, Enzo. 500 yeah. bucks. Let's go. Okay. 500, and I think Wait a we second. struck we have a little thing. We got to do it. We got to do it. Behind the can I uh, possibly on real men. throw I'm some pretty cash. sure Ted's going to be up. He, he said no credit cards, Ted. No credit cards. Join us next time on Real Men. Thanks for coming by. All right. Good night.